with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated. So excited today. I've got singer, songwriter, actress, Lauren O'Brien with me. So welcome, Lauren. Hi. Thank you for having me. Am I crazy or did you show up on an episode of Billions? I did. Uh, you probably didn't see me, though. I'm not sure. It was a very, very, very small role. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it was more of a uh, more of a background type of role, but that's yeah. not a bad show to have a, a background role. in. It, it was really, really cool to, to watch that whole production. Yeah, you were like a law student or something. I was. Yeah. 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 Very pretty cool. Good. <laughs> pretty good. Well, let, let's start this way, Lauren. Um, tell me a little bit about what got you into music. You know, I know you also dabble at least a little bit in, in acting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, talk about that a little bit. You know, is, is that something you want to pursue as well? Or are you mostly concentrating on the music? Sure. Yeah. So I kind of grew up doing everything in musical theater, dancing, singing, acting. Yeah. Um, and then as I got older, um, in high school, I signed to a talent agency. So they started sending me out on auditions and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but I definitely missed the music side of things. And in college, I started singing right. coffee houses um, and stuff like that. So I started definitely to get more into the, the writing aspects and um, pursuing myself as an artist more so. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of how I ended up where I am now. But I'm still pursuing acting it's one of those things where you get the audition and then you see if you get the role. So who knows what kind of roles might come my way, but That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to audition and get to see what I get to be on. Well, have you done um, theater since you got out of school? I haven't done theater. Um, I definitely like prefer to do more of the on camera type of acting stuff when I'm doing acting. Um, but I do like appreciate theater a lot. Um, it's just a whole different, um, whole different ball game when it comes to pretty uh, intense theater yeah. because you, you you have so many performances that you have, mm -hmm. but not a bad way to kind of get your feet wet as an actor. Well, I think the thing with theater is that you know you get really comfortable on stage, which is great in front of an audience. You get familiar with everything with lines. It's just everything gets scaled down a lot when yeah. you're performing for a camera. So it's different. But at the same time, obviously, there's so much that's the same. Yeah. I did see you on FBI. You were <laughs> Chloe's friend. I do remember that. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good because those are some pretty big shows that you're at least getting um, getting involved, which is what it takes. You got to go to those mm -hmm. auditions and stuff and get to know the different casting directors and the people involved. And then even yeah. if you don't get the role initially, they might remember you for the next time. It's yeah. I like doing roles like that where you get to see like how the big productions work because, you know, mm -hmm. I've done short films and small films with, you know, the local people and that's awesome, but there's nothing like getting to see the huge, you know, yeah big scale productions and really what goes into that until you're actually there. So it was definitely really great experiences to, uh, to be able to be on those sets. Were, th were they in LA or, or where were you at when you were on in them? Um, Billions, it was filmed on a set in New York okay. and the FBI okay. was in Connecticut. So those are both from my New York agent. It's like a weird place. I, you don't hear of much being filmed in Connecticut but I guess they have stuff. I think it just depends on where they, like what set location they're looking for. Cause yeah. sometimes they're just looking all over for something specific. <laughs> Is it acting wise, do you have a preference on genre or does it matter? Is it just about the role? I definitely found myself in like doing a couple like horror type things, which <laughs> I wouldn't have expected for myself, but I kind of like anything. Um, are I you a chicken? Because like I'm a chicken when it comes to horror. I get oh yeah. I, I have trouble like keeping my eyes on this. <laughs> yeah, me too. I get nightmares very easily. So 
but when you're behind the scenes, you know, things don't look as real. So that's one of the good things yeah. about, about yeah, that. That's pretty, yeah, that's pretty good. So so let's talk about the, the music because you've got a new song coming out. Is it Friday? Yeah. Yeah, so the 28th comes out Friday. It's called Another Shot. And uh, your voice is amazing. Really oh, pretty yeah. voice. But that song's really good. Thank you. Yeah, it's very... Uh, I mean, it was. It sounds a little country to me, and I, I'm not really a musical person, but it, it sounds a little country to me. But it's it's got a little pop in it too. There's a little kick to it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. definitely what I would like to find as you know pop country. So it's kind of somewhere in the middle where it has both elements going on. And overall, I think it's just a fun, lighthearted song that I hope. Yeah, most it's a good like. song. <laughs> Thank you. Did um, did you did you write it as well? Yes, I co-wrote the song with my friend Ava Safasa. Um, yeah. I started writing the song by myself and I brought it to Ava because she's an incredible songwriter um, and she was able to help me craft it into a song that it is today. And I'm super thankful to have her as a collaborator. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. So what's the uh, what's the song about? You know, what kind of inspired you to write? Yeah, so it's based off of a true story. Um, okay. It's, it's a pretty fun story about you know seeing a, an ex at a bar and I won't reveal many other details but that's how the story came about and I thought of the title um and Ava was able to help me craft it into a really fun upbeat country song if if the ex hears the song <laughs> will they know that it's about them uh I think that it's nice when you write things to you know put some things that could apply to one person and then kind of make things mysterious so <laughs> I think he would know but we'll leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> are you planning to do a video um at this time no but you know depending on how the song goes it, it could happen <laughs> yeah have, have you done videos in the past I have yeah yeah I thought so I thought so those are kind of fun but there's a lot of work involved a lot of fun, especially for me, because I love to act. So getting to kind of put everything together in one thing is really fun. Um, but it is, yeah, it's definitely a lot of work. Um, and I have an amazing friend who makes all my videos, um, Gina Lombardo. So it's been really great. You've got a good support group. I do. I have friends that are collaborators and we all just like work so well together. Um, so I'm super That's awesome. That. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty great. When you, when you film those videos, were you in... Philly. Yep. So we were in the Jersey area. Um, Jean and I yeah. actually went to high school together. She studied film in college. So it kind of worked out perfectly that I got to use one of my best friends to help me make the videos that I wanted to make. If you stayed best friends till it was made, it's meant to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cause that can be a little stressful. Yeah. We, we, I was in her, uh, in her films in college so we've definitely worked together before so yeah we have a good working and friendship <laughs> we uh we've been listening to you around the house which is what we do when I, i've got an interview coming up i just play the music oh, you know, but, thank you. so so we liked uh my wife and i we liked uh weekdays i thought that was really good and then there was another one um match i think is that mm -hmm. right yeah. yeah yeah those are the two that that we really liked um, are you planning to to kind of keep releasing leading up to like an EP? Is that the plan? Yeah. So I recorded a bunch of music last year in Nashville. Um, so it was kind of part of the plan here to, you know, put out some singles and then at the end of this year, put out an EP. So there's going to be some music that doesn't get released as singles that gets put on the EP, but that music that you that you liked uh weekdays and match they'll be on the ep that's exciting it's very exciting yeah that's pretty exciting what was it like the first time you got into like a big time you know studio to record oh, your music it was actually i know that has to be different yeah first like big like legit studio was for the song um i walked it was at a place called starstruck studios in nashville mm -hmm. it's like has like 100 steps leading up and it's got all this glass windows it looks very very fancy and I was like <laughs> there's like a security guard I was like wow this is legit um but 
a lot of really big country artists have recorded there. So it kind of felt surreal to be in a place that a lot of legends. Yeah, that's that's a little intimidating. Yeah, I mean, it was it was just cool to me. I mean, there weren't that many people there that day. So it was, you know, good vibes. But I was yeah. just like thinking about all the people who recorded there before. And it was a really cool experience. When, when you go to do that, do they have people there that are doing the recording part? Or do you have to bring in somebody and kind of do that for you? So my producer, Sam Martinez, he uh, kind of orchestrates the whole thing. Um, yeah. And for this song specifically, he recorded me and then he also got um a guitar player to play some extra instruments on there um so he kind of orchestrates like what goes on besides recording vocals yeah that's pretty great that's pretty great mm -hmm. um do yeah. you play any instruments i do play guitar and piano but sam <laughs> handles the professional recording and stuff like yeah. that I don't, I wouldn't want to have my guitar playing or piano playing on well, my record. Are you, are you a good enough guitar player where if you did like the, um, you know, like the coffee house type of. Yeah. You know, so autistic or autistic or autistic uh, uh, guitar. Can you do that? Yeah. So I can, I can play guitar for like a coffee house and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. when it comes to the, the big stuff, I like to have it handled. Yeah, you want it. somebody that kind of specializes. Yeah. And then I can focus on my performance and not yeah. worry about you know, hitting our own chord with the guitar. <laughs> yeah. Did you do, um, I know you did theater in high school. Did you do like show choir? I did. Yeah. I did choir every year um, in high school. And then I also did it like when I was younger. So I've kind of always been in the music world, but yeah. I didn't really, you know, start doing my own thing. Cause when you're growing up, you know, you have all these different activities and like, it's like That's right. okay, choir, I'm just going to stand here and sing with everyone. But I think, you know, it's a lot different when you're creating your own music. Yeah. Yeah. So what, you know, where does your inspiration come from? Does it, does it kind of hit you and you got to sit down and write it down real quick or or do you sit down and then just try to think of what you want? Usually song titles just come to me randomly. Like <laughs> if I'm like, you know, reading something or watching something and I'll be like, oh, that's a good title and I'll write it yeah. down. And then I'll sit down to like actually write, um, write things. So I guess it kind of starts as a random thing that pops in my head and then it becomes more like, let's sit down and work this idea out. Yeah, I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. Do you have any aspirations to um, try your hand at writing for like a TV show or a movie, like doing a script? I think that would be really, really cool. I think... Anything for me where I can like cross over the two worlds would be really fun. So yeah. I, would I mean, I think if you can write music, you could probably write a script. Oh yeah. I think yes. I could too. Haven't done it yet, but <laughs> then you can write, you could be like a singer that accidentally falls into solving crime. I could just yeah. write the you whole could thing. star in it. Yeah. I the singer who you know kills someone and then someone kills me and that it all becomes and then I'm writing the songs for it that's it that's the songs. whole thing <laughs> yeah you, you you're the lead you you're the me. writer the producer all of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um when did you learn piano is that something you you learned growing up or did you pick it up um, my parents um, got me piano lessons as I was a child, mm -hmm. and I definitely didn't appreciate it as much as I do now. When I was a kid, I was like, oh, I have my piano lesson this week. Um, but now I'm very yes. thankful that I know how to read music and it kind of sets the foundation for everything. Well, I was going to ask you if you read music or if you played more by ear. I, I learned how to read music um, growing up, but now kind of being an artist, there's a lot more things that you have to do by ear. So yeah. it deflects both mus both muscles, but it's good to know how to read music for sure. Yeah. I know I know some musicians that um, play by ear, they, they don't know how to read music, which always fascinated me because I'm like, that's kind of incredible that you can still play the song. Yeah, I think at some point it kind of all, like you figure it kind of clicks and you can hear things instead of having to see it. But um, I definitely am thankful that I had those piano lessons <laughs> growing yes. up. <laughs> what's uh, what's your family's 
reaction to you acting and singing? Oh my God. My parents are like so supportive. I'm so thankful. Awesome. I got a text from my dad this week just saying like, oh my God, this song is so good. I've been listening to it like a bunch of times. Like I just get those random texts out of the blue and then, you know, they're telling all their friends what I'm up to. And I'm like, oh God, <laughs> but I'm really That's thankful. good parenting. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's all like the I'll see one of their friends and they'll talk to me about stuff. I'm like, how did you know that? <laughs> My parents are, you know, talking about it. <laughs> that's pretty great. That's pretty great. Yeah. Good for them. So that's that's what you do. Yeah. When, when one of your children is involved in something. Yeah. You share it with everybody. Yeah. I'm, I'm really thankful that they're, you know, in my corner um, and they always are there for me, which is, is really great. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So what's the plan um, going forward? I know you're working on the EP for the end of the year. Are mm -hmm. you um, currently auditioning for things? Uh, you know, do you take a break while you're doing the music and then go back to acting? You know, how does that work? I'm definitely not taking a break, but the way it works for me is that my agents will um, kind of just email me and ask if I want to audition for something. So I think being involved with music, I'm a little bit more picky because I I want to, you know, spend my time wisely. So I only really audition for the product projects that I really want to um, go for. So who knows? I think with acting, you know, things really pop up out of the blue. Um, for so, sure. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Gonna have you done? Um, have you done any voice work? Voiceovers. Yeah. Um, I have. I think I've done like two voiceover jobs, like commercial. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think you've got a pretty good voice and definitely a good uh, singing voice. It seems like that would work pretty well for commercials or, you know, even like animated stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely have um, done a couple of those jobs and auditioned for them. And it's fun being able to also like do different characters uh, with your voice. Does the the EP that that you're working on mm -hmm. do all of the songs kind of go together to tell a story or is it more eclectic and kind of put in there to tell different stories? I think they're different stories, but a lot of them are kind of from the same period of my life. So you can definitely, yeah. see, like, there's a lot of similar themes um, kind of going in and out of this, of the stories. So like they're different, but there's a lot of things that overlap in them. I like the fact that you kind of cross over between um genres or combine them because it 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 to me it makes you very uh versatile you know mm -hmm. you could you could sing country or you could sing pop or maybe rock you know you've got the voice that would go whatever direction you want which is kind of neat yeah and I mean that's kind of like the music that I like to listen to I like to listen yeah. to kind of everything I definitely do listen to a lot of country a lot of pop country so that's what I wanted to put out there in the world was, you know, stuff that is, is fun to listen to, has country elements, has pop elements. Um, I know of. the lines have gotten blurred, you know, over the last several years. It's yeah. you don't just have country singers or pop yeah. singers. It, it, a lot of it crosses over. Yeah, I know. And a lot of, you know, people will say, oh, that's not country. And it's like, well, what is what is country? <laughs> <laughs> like to me, I mean, I definitely think it's a lot of storytelling in terms yeah. of the songwriting itself. Um, and then production, there's some elements that are definitely way more country than other. But at the end of the day, I think that, you know, the lines are really blurred. So you might yeah. as well just make the music that you want to make and whatever genre it ends up in is where it ends up. Yeah, I think that's a good attitude to have. Yeah. Who, um, who inspired you musically as you were growing up? I have always been a long time fan of John Mayer and Taylor yeah. Swift. John Mayer, I used to put his CDs in my car back when we had CD slots in the cars. <laughs> uh, and also just Taylor as a, a songwriter. Um, they both really inspired me a lot. I think they're both, you know, those humongous musicians of, of a little Well, they, they're so talented, but not just talented. not just singing. Their, their um, songwriting skills are in every way yeah every their songwriting the production their just their artistry in general um they definitely have inspired me but i listen to like all different types of music and i try like when i'm listening to you know really 
listen and listen to like all the lyrics and all the production. And I feel like when I was younger, I just would put it on. And, and now I, I feel like I'm much more of like a critical listener when I'm listening to music. Well, it makes sense because now you're trying to maybe learn some stuff and pick up yeah. things that you can use where mm -hmm. previously maybe you're just listening to it like most of us do just to enjoy it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty great. So mm -hmm. what's, you know, what are you working on now? Is it just about um, putting the song out for this Friday or do you have some other stuff that you're also doing in addition to? Um, everything kind of like, there's one thing happening and then there's something else following it. So oh, that's good. Another shot is definitely the focus right now, but I've kind of been in um, a good flow of releasing music about like every six weeks. So once another that's shot, pretty quick. Again, yeah, there's gonna be another one coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, that's pretty quick. What's the uh, next single that you're releasing? Um, I can't say yet, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really good, and I think it also like it. It's similar in some stories, um, kind of similar to the weekday story. Um, yeah. so there's definitely a lot of like ties into the previous music. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I, I love the way, um, you can tell a story, but also make it really enjoyable. Even, even though you're listening to, you know, some of the stuff's maybe not a positive, yeah. but it's so, uh, catchy, mm -hmm. you know, it makes you feel good when you listen to it. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like I try to depend like even if it's like a sadder song to still make it like a moving type of music because I personally like don't really like listening to sad songs sometimes because they'll put me in a sad mood so even if it's like more of a sad story I try to like you know make it sound a little bit more positive yeah yeah and I think I think you do a really great job of that thank you um do you have any plans to tour or to play live yeah, so um, I have a couple live performances this week with local stations in Philly, um, yeah. and then I have a couple performances that are being set up for like end of summertime. Um, so I'm definitely excited to, you know, play these songs live and yeah. get to see people's faces in real life. I'm assuming you've played live before, so mm -hmm. that's not new. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did a lot of coffee houses in college, and then obviously, you know doing all the performing growing up I'm pretty familiar with being on the stage so <laughs> it's kind of yeah, that probably that probably translates yeah if you're if you're used to being in front of people it makes it a lot easier when you you know have bigger crowds definitely yeah I think it's kind of one of those things where you do it and then like five times later you're like oh this is nothing even though there's like thousands of people staring at you, <laughs> you just kind of get I mean the, the nice thing when you're on stage you can only see the first couple rows anyway like actually make out faces then it just kind of blurs together well if you're in a small venue then you can see everyone's face so yeah that's true yeah if it's a small venue <laughs> they're all staring at you yeah <laughs> so goal is to play huge venues <laughs> i went to a um tool concert uh, this has been decades ago but um the lead singer played the entire set facing opposite the audience so he never turned around so he was singing, but it was just singing to the back of the stage. That's the interesting. Thing. Yeah, I don't know if that was just a, a gimmick or if he like had some type of stage type of thing. Maybe he was having a bad hurt or something. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. He never turned around. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I've never seen that before. I mean, yeah. I think it's obviously important to connect with your audience. But I mean, that's a cool, I guess, like artistic thing to, you know, hide your yeah. face. I guess people do that. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not artistic enough to know if that's a cool thing. I, I, I mean, was I, sitting there. I was like, what, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Sia who wears like the, the wig. That's true. Yeah. 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 Maybe that's all it was. Maybe he was ahead of his time. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what was, what was your first concert that you I went to? Concert was yeah. Justin Bieber. No, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was maybe 11 years old. And it was like the loudest concert. My mom uh, came with myself and my cousins. And she was like, Oh, my God, like, it's just like a bunch of 10 year old girls screaming. I was gonna say he was so popular with oh, yeah. younger girls at that time. 
Yeah. I mean, it was a great concert for when I was that young. I don't know if I would want to go see that again now. <laughs> well, you got to sing exactly the same stuff. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if if Is there someone that you haven't seen in concert that you would love to see? Hmm. I haven't seen um, Morgan Wallen yet. And he oh. is, you know, the big country star yeah. right now. So I would love to see him. I've seen, I feel like, almost every other, like, big country artist um so he's definitely next on my list to see <laughs> yeah do you have a favorite concert that you've been to um I recently went to Kelsey Ballerini's concert like, yeah. like two, three months ago it was one of the best concerts I've ever been to really? it was so so fun like I I think that she did an amazing job it was the first time I ever seen her play too yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I've heard good things about her shows. Yeah, that, it I've was never been extremely there. impressive. Just the whole show was amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Did did you um, dance growing up? I did, yeah. I kind of did like all types of dance, but I mostly did like jazz, tap, um, and like lyrical, which is kind of yeah. like a soft. I know dance. lyrical. I, <laughs> I had a, a daughter that I okay. still do, but she was a dancer all, all the way growing up so she was in all the different things so I know I know lyrical I know the competitions were long days <laughs> yeah I wasn't really that like um into like the competitive stuff I'm more so like would take classes and then do recitals yeah. and stuff like that um and then the dancing kind of like started blending into the musical theater um but yeah I love dancing it was really fun and Sometimes I like wish I could go to a dance class still, but there's not that many of those for adults. <laughs> there's some out there. There are some. I've looked into it, but not that many. <laughs> Maybe with the music videos, you can get yeah, some. that's true. But then you bring in a choreographer and it's like free dance lessons. There you go. <laughs> well, I guess they're not free. Somebody's going to have to pay them. I'll have to pay for it. <laughs> but at least you get dance lessons. That's true. Yeah. I haven't yeah. thought about that. <laughs> that wouldn't be uh, terrible. So outside of acting, mm -hmm. singing, writing, what do you like to do? What do you do in your downtime? I love to be with my family and friends, first and foremost. But when I'm with my family and friends, I love being at the beach. I'm a Jersey girl. So oh, I'm yeah. at the beach. I have my boating license. Um, oh, you do? I do. Yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> That's a good really skill. I don't think a lot of people like drive the boat because sometimes I get scared, especially when it gets like kind of choppy. Yeah. Um, but I like, yeah, I love being on the water. I've kind of always been a beach girl. Um, I, I like being. What, what are the beaches like in New Jersey? Are they pretty nice? Gorgeous. Yeah, I've heard that. Are the are, does it is the water calm or do you have waves? Um, there's, there's waves for sure, um, where the beach is, it depends on the, like the day, if they're going to be like yeah. rough or calm. Um, but, and also Jersey has a lot of different types of beaches, like some beaches you'll go to where the sand's a little bit more rough. Um, where I go, the sand is like so soft. It's like people compare it to the Caribbean, which is crazy because you're in New Jersey. Yeah, that is, that is crazy. Yeah, it's like nearly white, like soft sand. And the one, yeah, like, you wouldn't not, expect that in New Jersey. You would not expect it, but yeah. It is. Yeah. It's. And then the water, like in the summer gets to be like 70, 75 degrees. So it's just yeah. my favorite place to be in the summer. So I'm excited. Yeah. That's pretty nice. I've always been a, a beach person too. And, and we don't really live close to, to a beach. You know, our West Virginians preferred destination is usually Myrtle beach, you know, in okay. South Carolina, but you got to drive to it. You know, yeah. we're not, we don't have any uh, right close to us, but you know, I grew up every year we'd go, to a beach every summer and, and that's what I still like to do mm -hmm. yeah the beach I think like I'll also just sit there with a book or you know a journal and I'll write on the beach it kind of just like resets you I feel like being yeah there's something about the water oh yeah you know I'm it just puts you in the right mindset yeah I'm definitely one of those people that like feels best when I'm outside especially by the water yeah yeah See, I'm not an outdoor person, but if outdoors involves the beach, I'm there. <laughs> I agree with that. I'm an outdoor <laughs> person depending on the situation. Like, I will go on a hike and be happy as long as, like, there's not many bugs crawling on me. So I have to be like, 
dress properly so that way I'm not, you know, making sure that there's no bugs. See, that's why I'm not much of a camper because mm. I'm just not big with, you know, bugs and creatures. I think it also helps when I go with someone else because then I'm like, oh, there's a bug, kill it. That's <laughs> they, right. You got to you got to have a designated yeah, bug. Yeah, they kill the bug and then I'm happy. So yeah. I don't know if I would be okay going camping by myself because then I'd have to face the bugs alone. Well, there's that uh, uh, glamping. Yeah. But I've never tried, but that seems more my style. I've never done that. I've only done um, camping in a tent because yeah, I think that, I feel like that's the whole point of camping. Well, it kind of is. If you're going to, like, yeah. if you're going to have Wi-Fi and TV and, and all of the luxury stuff, you might as well go to a hotel. Yeah, I agree. What's Yeah, what's the point? I feel like the point of being in a tent is that you think you might get attacked by a bear or something. <laughs> have you ever been in a tent when an animal came around? Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like you That's hear nice. all the animals when you're in there because there's nothing but, like, thin thin plastic or whatever it is made of. That's why I never sleep like up against the side of a tent. Yeah. Because you never know. Yeah, <laughs> only, thing, only thing poking me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I love, I definitely love being outside. I try to like, even just on a regular day, go on a walk for a couple miles, yeah. just to clear my head. So um, I'm happy that the weather is starting to get warm. Do you have a trick like when you've got a, a block you know, when you're trying to write and you've got a, like a middle block, do you have something to get you out of that? Mm -hmm. it, it is definitely walking. I feel like that's the only thing that clears my head that well. Like I like that. Going on a nice long walk, just, you know, hearing the birds. I kind of get that. I, I would probably run, you know, I, I run, yeah. um, but that's how I kind of close it. When I'm running, there's nothing going through my head. It's kind of a reset. Yeah. It's definitely a, a, a good thing. And I, I know that you can, also listen to like walking uh, meditations. I've tried that mm -hmm. before. Sometimes I just like to, you know, just go and not have anything playing and just be yeah. myself and my thoughts. Yeah, you and your thoughts. Yeah, I, I totally get that. I'm a, I'm an introvert, and and it's you know, like I love doing the podcast, mm -hmm. but after I need a little time to myself. I need a little downtime. Yeah, I'm you know, gonna recharge. I'm definitely introverted, so I like to you know, regroup. It's funny that there's so many musicians and actors that are introverts, which you wouldn't expect. You think, oh, they love being in front of people and stuff. And yeah. they might in some ways, but at some point when they recharge, they need that alone time. Yeah. I think that being an artist, um, actor, it's like a self-reflective type of thing to do. And I think that that's kind of something that, you know, introverts do a lot. It's like self-reflect yeah. and, you know, Yes. Alone and stuff like that. And I think that that's kind of where good art comes from is kind of, you know, being with your thoughts. Agreed. So I think that that's Agreed. probably. It's also where I usually beat myself up over something stupid I've said at some point. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta try to, you gotta do that quickly and then move on to something positive. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll give myself a minute or two to, to feel, you know, sorry for myself. And then I gotta, yeah. Well, it's, it's healthy, you know, to reflect. Maybe you did something wrong. But That's right. You can fix on. it. Next yeah. time it won't happen again. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Lauren, thank you so much for taking a little time with me. The song is wonderful. It's another shot. Comes out this Friday, the 28th. Um, yeah, I just love your voice. Thank you so much. Thanks for having yeah. me. Oh, you're so welcome. So, so a couple little things before we wrap up. Um, yeah. Anything else that you're working on? That we can keep an eye out mostly just music and if, if anyone listening wants to follow me on social media they can stay tuned there um, yeah well that was my next question where can we find yeah. you on social media? yeah so i have a very common first and last name lauren o'brien <laughs> so i have to put my middle name in there so my handles are lauren alexis o'brien <laughs> oh very nice very nice yeah i found you without too much trouble i had to look a little yeah. bit but but it came up yeah yeah, there's a handful of us out there, Lauren O'Brien's. <laughs> well, there's a ton of Michael Walls. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've, I've been uploading uh, episodes to IMBD for the mm -hmm. podcast, and I'm like Michael Wall 8 yeah. or something, you know, of 30 or something. Uh, mm -hmm. crazy, so. I'm definitely jealous of the people who got on all these things, like, before. Yes. 
they get to be the first. <laughs> yeah, well, good for them for thinking ahead because I should. <laughs> we got to start doing that for everything that comes out. Every new social media. Just yeah. Pick our gotta, name. Even if you're not going to use it, you got to go get the name. Yeah. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> well, Lauren, you have to come back. Maybe when the EP comes out, come yeah, back and right. give us an update on how things are going. I'd love to. Yeah, this has been uh, terrific. So nice to uh, to meet you. And I, I do hope we get to do it again. Me too. Yeah. Okay, hold on one second. All right, so that was the talented Lauren O'Brien. The song is Another Shot. It comes out uh, Friday. Really good country pop song. So it's it's catchy. It's something you can sing along to. I don't dance, but if you dance, you could probably dance to it. Really good. It's really good. So I hope hope you enjoyed that. I think she's really talented. I'm sure she's um, going to have a, a nice career as an actress as well. I've only seen her a couple of times in some smaller roles, but she was really good um, in both. So keep an eye out for her there. Uh, if this is your first time watching the show and you liked it and would like to support us, it's real easy to do. It's free. All we ask is that you subscribe. If you prefer to watch, it's YouTube MeisterCon Pod. Just hit that subscribe button. If you listen, wherever you listen to your podcast at or whatever application you're using, just hit subscribe there. That'll help us as well. We're closing in on 600 episodes. I can't believe it. Um, You can find all of those audio and video on our website, MeisterCon.com. If we're doing anything in studio, We're going on location. We're covering a convention. Whatever we have going on, it'll be on the website, meistercon.com. So please check us out there. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.